Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Spark Summit 2017. Brought to you by Databricks. The Cube is live once again from Spark Summit 2017. I'm David Goh, your host, here with George Gilbert, and we are interviewing uh, many of the speakers that we saw on stage this morning at the keynote. Happy to introduce our next guest on the show. His name is Matt Fryer. Matt, how you doing? Very well. <laughs> you are the That's chief the grand truth. chief data science officer. I don't see many CDSOs out there. Is that a common? I think it's a it's a it's a newer title, and it's coming. I think where companies that feel. Uh, the use of data, data science, and algorithms are fundamental to their, uh, their futures. They're creating uh, both the, the mix of commercial, technical, and uh, sort of algorithmic skill sets as one team uh, mm -hmm. to execute together. And that's where the, uh, the title came from. There's more coming. There's a number of, Facebook have a few, has one for example. Um, but uh, it's a newer title. I think it's going to become larger and larger. So a CDSO on. for Hotels.com. Correct. Uh, something else we learned about you that you may not want me to reveal, but I heard you were the inspiration for Captain Obvious. Is that true? Uh, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Captain Obvious is, is our inspiration of our brand. Right. So there's, a, there's an awesome brand team at a, our office out of Dallas. Yeah, and I'm agency. just kidding. You have to <laughs> but, uh, I think the captain, we all love the captain. He, um, he has a, a, some good humorous moments and it keeps us all kind of happy. Oh yeah, he states the obvious. We're going to talk about some of the obvious and maybe some of the not so obvious here in this interview. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about company culture because you talked a lot on the stage this morning about uh, customer first kind of approach rather than a, ooh, look what I can do with the technology. Talk a little bit more about the culture at Hotels.com. And that's important and I think um, we're, in a, we're a very data driven culture. I think most tech companies and, and travel uh, technology companies have that kind of ethos. But fundamentally, you know, the focus and, our, and the reason we exist is for the customer. So we want to bring, uh, and actually an even better way than that I think is the people. So whether it's the focus on the customer, you know, if we do the right thing by the customer, we fundamentally want you to use our platform time and time again. Whatever need you have, uh, booking, lodging and travel, please use our platform. That's the crucial win. Mm -hmm. So to do that, we have to always make, delight you in every experience you have with us. And equally about people, it's about the team. So we have an internal concept called being supportive. So the whole part of our team culture is that everybody helps everybody else out. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't single things out. It's, we're all part of all the same team. And we all win if all of us pull together. Mm -hmm. And that makes it a great place, fun place to work. We get to play with some new technologies. You know, tech is important to us. Mm -hmm. But actually the people is even more important to us. Probably why um, you love the Spark Summit then, huh? Same kind of spirit here, I right? It's great, I and, I, and I think it's my, uh, my third Spark Summit. My, it's my second time uh, over in San Francisco. And I just, hey, the size of it is very impressive now. Um, and I just love meeting other people, learning about some of the things they're up to, how we can apply those back to our business, and hopefully sharing a little bit what we're up to. Well, let's dive into how you're applying it to your business. Uh, you talked about this evolution toward becoming an algorithm business. What does that mean and what part does Spark play in that? I think a lot of it is, is about how do you, um, if, you think, if you think about a bit of the journey, historically a lot of uh, um, the opportunity came in building new features. Constantly building, there's like an, almost like a semi-arms race about how to build more and more features. Mm -hmm. The crucial thing I think going forward, and particularly with mobile devices now, you know, over half our traffic, comes from people using smartphones and, and uh, both the app and mobile web. That bringing together means that uh, be more targeted in understanding your, your journey. And, and people are um, less tolerant to time. Speed is much more important. Mm -hmm. People are, expect things to be right there when they need it. Relevance is, is much more important to people. So we need to bring all those things together to offer um, a much more targeted experience and a much more real-time experience. Um, people expect you to have understood what they did milliseconds ago mm -hmm. and respond to that. The only way you can do that is using data science and algorithms. You balance that on the business operations side, which is how do you scale? You know, the analogy I use with, say, um, anomaly detection, which is, is a crucial uh, future for enterprises, is you, know, you used to have like, large business intelligence, lots of reports, pages of paper. Now right. people have things like Tableau, Power BI, those are great, and you need those to start with. Mm -hmm. But really, as a business leader, you want to know, tell me what's broken, tell me what's changed, because if it's changed, something caused the change. Tell me where it's slowly moving, 
And most importantly, tell me where the opportunity is. Mm -hmm. And that transforms the conversation where algorithms can really surface that to users. And it's about organic intelligence. It's not about artificial intelligence. It's about how do you bring together the people and the advance in technology to really do a great job for customers. Well, you mentioned AI. You made a big, bold claim about AI. I'm going to ask George to weigh in on this in just a moment. You said AI was going to be the next big thing in the travel industry. Uh, can you One of the next big things, I think. Okay. Yeah, and I think it's already happening. Um, in fact, um, our chairman, um, uh, Mr. Diller, made that statement uh, very recently, mm -hmm. uh, and also backed up by both the CEO and, and the brand president, where it's, you know, if you think about 20 years ago, one of the things both Expedia and Hotels.com and the wider travel sort of online space did was democratize price information and made it transparent to users. Mm -hmm. So previously, the power was with the travel agent. Mm -hmm. That power moved to the user, they had the information. And that's evolved over time. And what we feel with artificial intelligence, particularly organic intelligence, and you know, enablers like mobile, messaging and having conversations, and machine learning make this happen that you can turn the screen around and actually you know, empower users almost with a second revolution, that actually they can have the advice and, those, and, the, and the, the benefits you had a number of years ago from travel agents, A, they have the price transparency, they have the other part now, which is the, the content, the advice, and what's the most relevant to help them. And you can listen to what they're saying to you to, to, as a customer, and actually we can now replay the perfect information back to them, or increasingly perfect as time goes on. Okay, let's unpack this, this a little a bit, George. To go on. Uh, yeah, let's look into the hood a little bit. That, that is fascinating, because in the way you sort of broke that out, with it, it wasn't actually only travel, but over the last couple decades, sort of price transparency became an issue for many industries. But what you're saying now is, by giving, uh, by giving the content to surprise and delight the customer, as long as you're collecting the data breadcrumbs that help you do that, you're not giving up control. You're actually, you're actually creating stickiness. Yeah, we're empowering, is the language I use. Yeah. And if you empower the user, they're more likely to come back to use your service in the future, and that's really what we want. We want happy customers. Tell us a little bit, um, at the risk of dropping a little in the weeds, tell us a little bit about how you um, empower, in other words, how do you know what, what type of content to serve up and how do you measure how they engage with it? It's a great question and I think it's quite an embryonic part of the world right now. I don't think anybody's, you know, I think we made some great developments. I still think it was a long journey we have. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a lot about how do you, uh, and this is true across data science and machine learning, mm -hmm. great data science is fundamental to having great feedback loops. So there's lots of different techniques and tactics around how you might discover those feedback loops. And customers are demanding that you use their data to help them. Mm -hmm. So we need to get faster in streaming is one way that's becoming feasible. And then the advances in streaming and it's great Databricks are working on that. But the advances in streaming allows us to feed that loop. It takes that much, those real time signals as well as previous signals to really help uh, figure out what, what you're trying to do today. Mm -hmm. What content, you know, interesting thing is that um, you know, Netflix and Amazon were some pioneers in this space, where if you, use, if you use Netflix service, often you go, how the hell did they know this video was going to be right for me? Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and some, some of the comments, and you can say, well, what they're actually doing is they're looking at micro segments. So previously mm -hmm. everyone talked about customer segments as these very large groups, and they have their place, mm -hmm. but increasingly machine learning allows you to build micro segments that what I can start to do is actually discover from the behavior of others, things you might be very relevant things you're going to be very interested in, and actually help inspire you and discover uh, things you didn't even know existed. Mm. Um, and by filling that gap and using those micro segments as well as per truly personal uh, personalization, I can bring that together to offer you a much more enhanced service. Mm. And, and so help, help make that concrete in terms of what would I, as a, a potential, I, I want to plan a vacation hmm. for the summer. I have my five and a half inch or five, seven, yep. you know, iPhone, and that's my primary device. And in banking, it's moved from tying everything to the checking account to tying every interaction to your mobile yep. device. So what would you show me on my 
on my mobile device that would get me really engaged about going to some location. So I think a lot of it is about um, where you are in that journey. So if you think um, there are so many different routes and routes customers can take um, through that buying decision. And it depends on the trip type, whether it's a leisure trip, seeing family and friends, you know, how much knowledge you may have about that. Have you been there before? Um, we look for all those signals to try and help inspire you. So a great example might be it's a desk, if you've stayed in a hotel um, on our site before mm -hmm. and you like that hotel and you come back and do a search again, we try and make it easy to continue by pinning that hotel at the top. Trying to make it easy to task complete. We have a, a trip planner um, capability which you'll see on the home screen, mm -hmm. which allows you to record and play back some of your previous searches. So you can ah. quickly see you know, and, and compare where you've been and, what, and what's interesting for you. But on top of that, we can then use the signals. And increasingly, we have a, a very advanced sort of filter list. Um, and that's a, a, a key, and we're looking at sort of how we do conversations and chatbots as a sort of future. Mm -hmm. To how to have that conversation to say, hey, here's a list of hotels, which we used a mix of your, um, uh, the types of preferences that we understood about you, and the wider thing, where you are in the world, what's going on, what time of day. Mm -hmm. We take hundreds of different signals to try and figure out what the right list is for you. And from that list, we, you know, the great thing is most people interact with that list and give us more signals, exactly what you wanted. Mm -hmm. and we can hone and hone and hone mm -hmm. and repeat. Because I said at the start, for example, um, the majority of customers will do multiple searches. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they want to understand what the market is. They may not be interested in one particular place. They may have a suite of places they're interested in. Mm -hmm. uh, and even now where we've um, moved further up the funnel, investing behind how can you figure out what destination you're interested in. So you may not even know what destination you're interested in, or there might be other destinations that you didn't know um, were very relevant for your use case, particularly if you're going on vacation, we can help inspire you to find mm -hmm. that, that, that hidden gem, at that hidden great price that you may not even know it existed. Mm -hmm. We can do a much better job, we can show you how busy the market is, so how fast you, sh you should be looking to book there. And if it's a very compressed and busy market, you need to get in there quick to lock your price in. And we now provide that information to help you make a better decision. You know, we can mine all that data to mm -hmm. empower you to make smart, smart decisions and smart data. I want to clarify something quick. I saw in your demonstration this morning, you were talking about detecting the differences between photos and user-generated content. So do you have users actually posting their own photos of the hotel right next to the Photoshop pictures at the hotel? We do. Posts? And yeah. what are some of the ramifications of that? So it's, in, it's, it's an interesting um, uh, advance that we've made. So we've, um, you know, in, in, in the last sort of year, we now offer uh, and asking users to um, submit their photos mm -hmm. to help uh, other users I think one of the crucial things is about how to be authentic. Uh, you know, we've, we've, over the years, we've had, we've had tens of millions of mm -hmm. testimonial reviews, textual reviews, mm -hmm. and we can see those are really crucially important to users in their buying decisions. That and scares the hotel owners to death, though, doesn't it? Well, I think it does, but I think the, um, it's, the, it's the testimony of the, of the customer. Mm -hmm. the, you know, one of the key things we call them is we have verified reviews. So to leave a review on our site, you've had to have stayed in that hotel. Uh, and we think mm -hmm. that's a crucial step and really helping to say, these are your customers. And very recent, in, in, in recent times, we've taken that product further, that now when you actually arrive at the hotel within a few hours, we'll ask you what your first impressions were. Mm -hmm. And we'll ask if you want to share that with the hotel owner. To give the hotel owner a chance to actually rectify any early challenges, so you can have a great stay. You know, one of the crucial things we have is that, mm -hmm. um, what's really, really important, is that users um, and customers um, have a great stay. That reflects on our net promoter score and their, their view of us. Um, and we need to fill that cycle and make sure we have happy users. So that real-time review mm -hmm. is super crucial in basically helping hotels. You know, they want happy users and customers as well. And it helps them to, to kind of course correct if there's an issue. And you know, we can step in as well as help the user if it's a really deep issue. Mm -hmm. And then with the photos, um, the, the key, I think, is how to uh, navigate and understand what the photo is. So the user helps us by tagging that, which is great. Mm -hmm. But how we possibly mistagging it? Possibly mistagging <laughs> it on occasion, and that's something we, we've, we're building some scale, as you heard, mm -hmm. right. on how to tackle that. But the crucial thing is how to bring these together. Um, you know, if you're on a mobile device, you've got to scan through each photo, and, and places around the world have limited bandwidth mm -hmm. uh, and limited time to go through them. So what we're now working on is how to assess 
mm -hmm. you know, the quality of those photos to try and make sure we authentically, you know, what we want to do is give the customer the most likely experience they will have. You know, we are, we, as I said before, we're on the customer's kind of focus. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure they get the best photos, that are the, uh, the most realistic of what's going to happen, mm -hmm. um, and they're the most diverse. Um, you, you, you want to see three photos exactly the same. Um, and we're right. working on the moment, you can swipe left and swipe right. And we're working on how that you know, display evolves over time. Um, it's exciting. Um, Very exciting, fascinating stuff. I'm sorry that we're up against a hard break coming here in just a moment. Uh, but I wanted to give you just 30 seconds to kind of sum up maybe the next big technical challenge you're looking at uh, that involves Spark, and, uh, and we'll close with that. Cool, it's a great question. I think um, I talked a little bit about that in the keynote. Um, internally, we call it the kind of the Alps challenge, you know, how to scale the mountain, um, which is a, there's been great advance on how to stream data into platforms. Mm -hmm. Spark is a core part of that. And the platforms that we've been building, and, and both internally, and partnering with Databricks and using their platform, has really given us a large boost going forwards. Mm -hmm. But how you turn those algorithms and that competitive algorithmic advantage into a live production environments, mm -hmm. whether it's marketplaces, ad tech mm -hmm. marketplaces, or websites, or in call centers, or in social media, wherever the platform that they needs to go, mm -hmm. that's a hard problem right now. Or mm -hmm. um, I think it's a too hard a problem right now. Mm -hmm. And I love to see, and we're going to invest behind that, mm -hmm. a transformation that hopefully this time next year, that is no longer a problem, it's actually an asset. Yeah, well I hope I'm not Captain Obvious to say, I know you're up to the challenge. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> but, yeah, thank, thank you. you so much, Matt Fryer. We appreciate you being on the show. Thank you for sharing what's, what's no, going on at Hotels.com. And uh, thank you all for watching theCUBE. We're going to be back in just a few moments with our next guest here at Spark Summit 2017.